pretty good at shucking oysters, but I'm truly going as fast as I can. Keep pushing harder, harder, harder. I ain't trying to go home. Chef, I seen you cutting all that beautiful salmon yesterday. What are you doing with it? I cured it in bourbon, orange, brown sugar. You got old fashioned? Yeah, it's flavored it like an old fashioned. <laughs> and Brian, what are you working on? Seasoning up this ground pork I have to make right. sausage. The fact is, I have probably too much to do in an hour. This has been a common theme throughout the competition for me. Fortuitous that we ended up next to each other, both doing the same I cocktail. Know. My cocktail is the last word. I'm actually doing I have the last word. I'm actually I have the last word. It's got a lot of fennel flavor to it. So I've got a Brenoise fennel in there with all the crudité, and it will pair really well with this cocktail. I'm actually... I have the last word. <laughs> this you wear? You work yes. in here? OK. This is a duck liver mousse. I need to go check my crostinis that are in the oven, and I got a lot of duck to slice. Other than that, I'm good to go. That's going to be nice. Yeah, yeah. Making a 12-mile oyster with a rum mignonette and a granita nage floater. Cool. It's game time. I got about 150 oysters to shuck in about 40 minutes. It's not going to be easy. Time is going to be a push, but the plan is to push. You cannot shuck 200 oysters in one hour and also get ready for service. No way. Right now, I am removing the feet on the scallops. I chose scallops because they're sweet and they're mild and they're decadent. The word I was looking for from the very get-go was feminine. It looks that way, it tastes that way, and it's a one-bite wonder. And other than that, it's just kind of putting it all together. It's not, not too terrible. I checked my beef liver mousse, and the chili is really strong. I'm trying to, to dilute it, but time's starting to run down. Chefs, we got 36 minutes. I'm running out of time, so I just put all the sausage on the flat top at one time. Total hack move. Five minutes, guys. Five minutes on the first. Five minutes. I want to balance these flavors delicately so that Nothing overpowers one or the other, but I'm worried about maybe being too simple. I need a win at this point. I just need some kind of confidence boost. Yeah, that's fine. How long did they have to prep? Three hours. Flavor profiles taste good. Still really spicy, but I'm feeling good about it. It's risky, though. It's really risky. I just hope that they see how I brought in flavors that worked well with the brightness of the drink. I'll make it fire. <laughs> Beautiful. Oh, here we go. Hi, guys. Let's start with you, Eddie. What did you make for us? Bourbon cured salmon, peach puree, caramelized orange gastrique, and some brown butter. What was the cocktail that you were inspired by? Old fashioned. Brandon. I have a duck and artichoke croquette with a pickled fennel relish. And I had the whiskey sour. Brandon, what cocktail did you choose? Southside fizz. So I did a chicken thigh salad with cucumber. Underneath is a peanut sauce infused with a little bit of aerated liver mousse. And then you have some Fresno chilies with basil, cilantro, and mint. OK, well, welcome back. Brother. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Let's start with Eddie. Sure. I think if the idea is to use the cocktail, I think Eddie did a great job. It's subtle, and a good cocktail is subtle. It's very sweet forward, which is what the old fashioned is. I thought Eddie's salmon was beautifully balanced with the peach, a little bit of orange zest. It's rich and fatty with the salmon and the butter solids. Really sweet and caramely. Have a good night. Thank you so much. OK, Brandon gave us the duck croquette. I don't think there's any better cocktail food than a croquette. People want to eat with their fingers. The artichokes. But it does add some bitterness and makes everything else taste sweet at the same time. It's actually a pretty good ingredient to use. I personally would have liked a healthy pinch of salt. Yeah. It's cooked really well, and there was like a really nice sauce. Now we have Brothers Dish. Oh, that's got some heat. You get a little bit of liver up front, you get the liver and peanut, that's fine, but you're left with this big spice bomb. It's a chicken dish, and you wouldn't even know there was chicken was, in exactly. it. Exactly. It could be anything, right? It's just hot. He took the lime and said Southeast Asia made some spicy thing that was over the top that had nothing to do with the cocktail. Hey, I can make friends, man. You got salt? After making the sausage, I don't have time to sear gnocchi individually and saute pans, so I just drop a bunch of it in the fryer. Even if I wanted to pan sear it, I can't do it. So this is the adjustment I've made. You got to go all in. That's how it works. Six minutes, Jeff. It's the gougeres that are taking me the longest. I have to let them cool, cut them, and stuff them with my liver mousse. Oh, my god. Kelsey, I think this tastes good, but it looks like shit. Maybe if I had another half an hour. I kind of start to freak out. Plating 200 canapes takes a lot longer than I thought. Three minutes left, Shy. Can somebody come over here and help me plate, please? All right, you're good. Hi, Hi. Hi Michelle. Hi. Brian, what did you make? I 
cocktail was the last word. It just sort of reminded me like a salsa verde. So what I did for you guys today is pork, fennel, and Calabrian chili sausage. And that is a basil and fennel gnocchi on top. Hi, Kelsey. I had the 12 mile limit, and then I did a scallop ceviche, a rhubarb cherry consomme, and then I did a corn puree on top to bring in the whiskey element as well. Hi, Michelle. I had the whiskey sour. I immediately thought of like a liver mousse, so I made that with bourbon, a pickled cherry with thyme and pomegranate syrup. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Michelle's liver mousse actually made the gourget really soggy very quickly. Right. Yeah. I don't think that Michelle's dish was a whiskey sour inspired dish. There was no sour. You want to take these last few? Thanks. Kelsey just worked. Good amount of acid, a little bit of sweetness. The liquid that the ceviche was in not only tasted like a diluted version of the drink, but it had the same color. Yes, yeah, yes, yeah. Pretty. Yeah. Very good. You know, when I get Brian's dish, an aftertaste of stale oil. Yes. Right? Because he fried the gnocchi and it's sad. The sausage is dried out, the gnocchi's dried out. It's like sand in a cup. Let's do it. Let's go. I'm plating on a napkin. It's an insane push. My canapes have six plus touches per piece, and they're tiny, but really am happy with how my dish came out. Here, you know? I'm pretty good at shucking oysters, but I'm truly going as fast as I can. Keep pushing harder, harder, harder. I ain't trying to go home. More boozy. Got the booziest cocktail of all. Look, I got it done. I shucked all those oysters in that small amount of time. It's Top chef, man. I don't even know how to explain it anymore, really. We got this, yeah? We got to hit the road right now. Right now, do it. Go, walk. I'm right behind you. Hi, guys. Hi. Ladies first. Okay. You. How's everything? I chose the old-fashioned, uh, one of my favorite drinks in the world. I did an old-fashioned duck a la a duck liver mousse um, that I made with bourbon and some orange zest. Hi, Sarah. I had the last word. I did for you base scallops with avocado, eggplant, and crudite. I got the 12 mile limit. So I got oysters and a rum and bourbon mignonette. And then I have a grenadine floater. Enjoy. Hi. Let's try Eric's oyster. I love the detail of the pumpernickel bread. It was so crispy. Eric's oyster was one of the best things I've tasted in a while. And it represented not only the flavor profile of the cocktail, but also the story of I thought 12 mile, I thought ocean. I thought oysters because of the water. This is really smart. The oyster is fantastic. It might be one of my favorites. What Justin did here, it's so hard with one bite of food to give you something that's really complex. Uh -huh. And I think he did. Uh-huh. The liver is like a condiment to the duck breast and very complex and really nailed it. Yeah. And the perfect balance of savory and sweet. Yeah. Tom, what do you think of Sarah's dish? Sarah's dish is a little one note. There's a good amount of salt, and there's not enough acid to balance it out. It's like mush on mush on mush. It's like a great dip. Yeah. It is a great dip. I don't think that Sarah's dish was really clearly influenced and inspired by the cocktail. Avocado shrimp toast, watermelon, cucumber, and ginger, yes? I'm ahead of the game, Adrian. Ahead of the game putting your cold fish on a plate, huh? <laughs> Must be nice. Ladies first, Tage. <laughs> Hi, guys. Hi. David, what was the cocktail you chose? The Gin Ricky. The dish is a shrimp tartare with cucumber, apple, and radish. We actually both had the Gin Ricky. Mine is a shrimp and avocado toast with cucumber, watermelon, juniper, and serrano chili. OK. Thank you, chefs. What I liked about David's dish, it had a long finish, like a good cocktail. I like that he used the, the radish because of echo quinoa in the gin. Wow, the apples feel kind of healthy and not quite simple. Adrian's dish is interesting. I think it actually captures the cocktail really well. A little bit of acid up front, mellows out, and then sweetness comes in the back of it. All I got is oil. Especially when you saw that on, yeah. your, on your one bite. Yeah. People said, like, multiple times that both shrimp dishes were their favorite, so. Yeah. Well, I think we've had some really interesting canapes, yeah. I must say. I feel like I understand at least all these drinks a lot better now. Glad none of us are driving. <laughs> well, Ken, as our guest judge, it falls to you to announce the winner of this challenge. The chef for us that had the winning dish, most creative, best bite we had all day, 
was eric.